code review is not only a technical process, it is part of the team communication. And as such, it needs to be approached with a proper attitude. We need to be aware that our review, that whatever we say will be read by another person. And as team members, we should make sure that we are well understood and that we do not introduce unnecessary negativity to our teams. So today I'm going to present five steps towards good, successful, positive code reviews. My name is Gregory and you're watching Becoming a Senior Developer. Let's start. What is the goal of code review? I believe that the goal is to verify the four characteristics of good code. Is it correct? Is it efficient? Is it secure? And is it well designed? We focus on the last part. Why on the last part? That's because the other three have some other mechanisms to verify them. So whether the code is correct might be checked by testers later and it also is partially checked by automated tests. Whether the code is secure and efficient can be checked by performance tests and by security tests. Not everything about security and efficiency, the performance of the code can be resolved by automated tools. But the point is that the last point, the good code, the readable code, this can't be solved with automated tools almost at all. It needs to be verified by human, by another developer. So this is the goal of code review. As a developer, as the person who didn't write this code, can I understand it? Do I know what it does? Do I know why it was designed the way it was designed? There will be positive side effects. You will find some bugs, you will find some performance issues, you will find some security issues. These are positive side effects of code reviews. Again, these are the side effects. Depending on the company culture, the team culture, the leadership, different people in the team might be involved in code reviews. What I promote in the teams that I lead, what I always encourage people to do, is that every team member, every developer in the team should participate in the code review process. This might seem like a controversial statement. Some people are against junior developers doing the code reviews because they believe that the value provided is too low and that this is not something that is appropriate at their level of expertise, but I completely disagree with that. I absolutely encourage junior developers to read the code, to comment on the code, to voice their doubts. I believe that the reviews done by junior developers and by mid-level developers are extremely valuable. The first reason is that they contribute in form of questions. They might notice some things that other developers didn't notice, which is not that common, but less experienced developers, because they have less understanding of the platform, of certain patterns, certain idioms, they ask really good questions. They ask, hey, how does this code work? I don't understand it. And because someone doesn't understand it, maybe we can find a better, simpler, more clear way to design that code. This is a really good contribution towards code reviews. The second reason is the education. Reading code is at least as important as writing code when it comes to learning programming. And by reading the code written by other developers, whether they are other junior developers or whether they are senior or lead developers, reading this code helps everyone learn a bit more, understand something more. You can learn some new pattern, you can learn some new technique. You will learn a lot by doing code review, no matter whether you have 10 years or 10 months of experience. Finally, the team building. Code reviewing is about communication. It's about two people or three people talking to each other and if junior developers are excluded from this activity, they might feel alienated. Uh, they might feel that they are not fully members of the team. They might feel less satisfaction from work and, you know, they might just feel discouraged. Now that you know that you should be doing code reviews and you know what is the goal of the code review, you're almost ready to start. There is one more extremely important topic before you start reviewing code of other people, the attitude. 
I've met a lot of people who feel stressed about code reviews, not when they do code reviews, but when their code is reviewed. And I totally understand that. Because getting your code reviewed means that a piece of work in which you put a lot of effort, in which, uh, you, on which you spend some time, which you might be proud of, now it goes to another person that doesn't have the same context as you, and that person will judge your work. And that person might tell you, this is low quality, this sucks, this is wrong. And there are some environments where such comments are quite common, and that contributes to the negative atmosphere in the team. People feel less inclined to finish their work because they don't want to go through this process of being judged and through reading these negative comments about their work. I must admit it that I used to be on the other side. I used to be a person that left a lot of negative comments during my code reviews because I believed that a code review was about writing the best code possible. So when I found something that wasn't the best, I say, hey, do it the other way. And while it might have contributed to the quality of the code in a positive way, it definitely contributed negatively towards my relation with other developers and towards the overall mood and feeling of motivation in the team. There was one thing that helped me to turn everything around. It helped me to improve the relation with other developers. It helped me to improve the code quality and the general outcome, the productivity of the team. And that was to change my attitude during code reviews. I switched from the mode of, I am a reviewer, I am the judge of your code, to I am a reviewer, I am here to help you to achieve our goal as a team. I realized that I'm part of the team and the code review is not time for me to show off my knowledge and skills. It is time for me to help the team to produce good code, to produce good results and to help everyone in the team to become a better developer. For example, instead of saying, this is wrong, write this instead and putting a bunch of code, you can say, hey, I believe that there is a bug here. Did you mean this instead? and provide the code that you want to use. Instead of saying, this design or architecture sucks, let's do it another way. You could say, I think that it might be done more efficient. What do you think about this? That one mental switch just changed my attitude, changed my tone of the code reviews. And while it took a while to get used to it, it had wonderful effects. Make sure to keep the positive attitude, even if you find the code quality subpar. Below this video, I put some links, and one of them is a research paper about the negative impact of the negative comments during code reviews. Check it out. You can see that even if the negativity is rare, it might have a quite long-standing negative impact on the author of the code. In short, don't put other developers down lift them up, help them to become better developers. Okay, so now you're ready to start doing the code review. How to do it? First, remember that it's a complex process. Code review sometimes might require as much focus as writing the same code. You are trying to understand what the author meant. And of course, in some cases, it will be very simple. There will be two lines of code that fix some bug, it is trivial. But sometimes it might really require a lot of attention. So make sure to prepare well. Schedule some time for that. Uh, read the task, read the acceptance criteria. What is the goal of this code? Read the description of the pull request left by the author. Maybe they point to some specific place in the code and they already explain some decision behind it. Maybe they say that there are still some issues left and they don't know how they solve it. When you start a review, start from the overall picture, see whether the general approach feels right, and then step by step, go towards the details. 
make sure to stay focused on the important parts of the code. Of course, there are some things that are very easy to spot, like a wrong variable name, like inconsistent variable name, or I don't know, inconsistent indentation. These things, of course, if they are there, you should mention them and ask the author of the code to fix the issues. But this is not core of the code. Anyway, this should be solved by automated tools. Then everything that can be done by machines will be done by machines. And you, the reviewer, will be able to focus on the essence of the code. If you have certain suggestions, if you find some issue, explain what is the issue, suggest some change. If something that you want to suggest is a matter of preference, you can either say, hey, this is just a matter of preference, you might want to change it to that, but you might want to just remove that comment. I believe that if something is a matter of preference and there is no agreement in the team on how to approach this thing, then the author of the code should be the one to decide. If you notice something that was done well, make sure to notice that, to write a comment saying, hey, good one, nice idea, I like it, I didn't know about it. It does a lot of good. You will be surprised, people really appreciate it. These small things, it costs you nothing. It's just one sentence saying, hey, good job, can make someone's day. Before you finish the review, when you're ready to publish, remember to reread the comments. Make sure that the tone of each comment is positive. Make sure that there is no ambiguity there. If something might seem too harsh to you, then probably it will be perceived as harsh by the author of the code. And finally, if you notice that something in the pull request is completely wrong, like it doesn't do what it's supposed to do at all, and it might need to be rewritten in entirety, then I suggest that you contact the author before publishing the code review and just say, hey, I believe that something is very wrong here. Can we go through this code together? Then you can explain what are your suspicions and then you can hear from the author of the code. Maybe they misunderstood the requirements or maybe you misunderstood the requirements. You can use the technique that I mentioned in the previous episode, which is per code review. Just make sure that everything is understood well before you leave a comment saying, this is wrong, we need to change it. And the last step is the follow-up of the code review. Because your code review is not finished the moment you say publish, the moment you submit your code review. If you request some changes, then you and the author of the code, you two need to agree on what changes will be introduced. Because maybe some suggestions that you left are really good, and maybe some of them are, well, not that good. And maybe you can agree with the author that the author will not introduce these changes, that the code will be left the way it is. So make sure that you clearly agree that if the changes are introduced, if these changes are correct, if they do not introduce any new issues, then you will approve the pull request. The worst thing that can happen during code review is that in the second round, you will find something and you will leave some comments totally unrelated to the changes that you agreed on. Because that leads to long, unnecessary going back and forth. And it introduces a lot of anxiety for the authors of the code because every round of the review might just be full of surprises, full of new comments about something that initially seemed to be okay. And on top of that, try to make the next rounds a bit faster because they will usually be much shorter. They will have much less code. So don't be the person that blocks the whole pull request from being merged. You don't have to stop what you're doing right now, of course. Just make sure that when you're done with what you're doing right now, you will have some time to look at that code again. All right, here we are. Remember that code review is part of the team communication. And because it is written communication, it lacks some nuance. It lacks the body language. It lacks the tone of your voice. Therefore, it needs to be approached with more care. You need to ensure 
that you are not misunderstood with your comments on someone else's code. It is quite a delicate thing because you are judging someone else's work. Therefore, ensure that you do it in a po with a positive attitude and that you help the author of the code to produce better outcome, to become a better developer. And in the next episode, I'm going to talk about becoming a senior developer or becoming a mid-level developer. In general, I will talk about getting promotion, how to approach the topic of promotion with your team leader or manager, and how to ensure that your work, that your results are noticed, and that you know what you need to do in order to get promoted. Stay tuned and see you in the next episode.